Hello and welcome to the worship of God at First Baptist Church. We we are so glad that you have joined us for our worship service today. Whether you are here in our sanctuary or if you are watching from home at a time that is not exactly this minute, because we have been having some technical difficulties with our live stream broadcast this morning. So for those for those folks who are watching from home. After we have posted this video, after our service is done, we do apologize uh, that whatever happened uh, with the gremlins in the cords of the camera and laptop, we apologize that you aren't watching this in real time as it's happening now, but know that wherever you are watching this from, you are a valued part of our church family, and we are so glad that you are watching and participating in our worship service today. Let me bring your attention to some uh, activities and scheduling program announcements today that are on the back of your bulletin. I will say that uh, the lunch program for families who are homeless in Asheville that we've been participating in, we'll be helping out with that for two more weeks. We've been uh, packing the lunches on Sunday evening at 5 and then delivering the lunches Monday, uh, lunchtime. So if you want to help out with that uh, good and uh, fun time of assembling or delivering lunches for homeless families, that would be this Sunday and next Sunday at 5. Or if you want to deliver, let Regina know, uh, you can deliver with one of the staff. So two more weeks of a really good program is what we had uh, signed up for on their schedule and sign up. We are very honored that we can help and participate and uh, serve the, some families around our county who are homeless and have been staying in the Red Roof Inn during this pandemic. So two, two more weeks of that good service. Uh, tomorrow, on Monday at 6.30, our choir will have another parking lot outdoor choir sing at 6.30. So choir members, make note of that so you can come and sing out loud to the four winds and make a joyful noise to creation. And if anyone else would like to come and listen, and just uh, sit in the parking lot and enjoy being blessed by the music and the singing, then you are certainly invited. Uh, it's tomorrow at 6.30. Wednesday, our kids and youth activities will be 4 o'clock. Kids will Zoom for Faith Builders. So Faith Builders for kids, 4 o'clock Wednesdays on Zoom. And the youth get to do their movie night this Wednesday. It will be at 6 p.m. On Wednesday, there won't be like a proper dinner that you all had been. There will be snacks and some drinks. Uh, you'll do some uh, fun movie watching, some Bible study discussion for uh, youth. This was the in person in the fellowship hall at 6 p.m. And for another fun announcement about something that will be coming up in just a few weeks, I'm going to get Regina to come up and tell you about that. Unfortunately, this year we are not going to be able to have our traditional fall festival, but we are going to try something new, and we have been talking um, with the staff and uh, some safety protocols, and we are going to have a community event outside in our parking lot, um, and we're going to do a socially distanced trunk or treat. Um, and so I wanted to just take the time to discuss that a little bit with you, and um, did that a little bit at the business meeting, but for those of you that weren't there, I wanted to ease some of your fears, because I know uh, those of you that are uh, paying attention and reading all this stuff about safe activities for families, Trump or Treat is on one of those lists of not COVID-friendly activities. So um, if you've ever been to a Trump or Treat, or if you've ever seen one done, uh, and you have that picture in your mind, that is not what we're doing. So we're doing it a little bit differently. Um, there won't be cars right beside each other, and there won't be a lot of families. Um, we will do it in our parking lot, um, and the Methodist Church has agreed to let us expand into theirs or to park cars in theirs. Uh, we will have the cars distance, um, and we will have uh, crowd control. So if there are some families that want to come in and they have too many, we'll have some people that might say, you need to stay in your car for a little while. And as families filter through and out, then we'll let some more families in. Uh, we'll be handing out masks, and um, we'll be handing out candy, um, and that way kids aren't, their hands aren't going and stuff. And so we are being very intentional about reducing germs and 
making sure that everybody's safe and that everybody can still have a good time. Um, we are going to do it on Halloween. It'll be Saturday, October the 31st in our parking lot. And we're going to do it here in the day. We're going to do it from 2 to 4 p.m. Um, a lot of the other churches and other community events are doing their stuff that night. Um, and that way it'll be something that um, some of the small kids can come out and do. And it'll be crowded and dark and that way people can't see what's going on. We'll be able to see better. Um, families can come in our costumes. We'll have an area for them to take their picture together. For them to play some games. We're going to have some of our, um, our fall festival games out. But ones where if we um, if they touch something, we'll wipe it down with a wipe for each kid. Or uh, like the Plingo, we'll do it for them. So they can watch it, but then, you know, they'll get a prize based on that. So we'll still get to interact with people in the community, um, and we'll still be safe doing that. But if you would like to help, I need volunteers in order to make this event uh, work. So if you will sign up, there is a sheet in the sign-up chat, or you can let me know if you are willing to do crowd control, uh, park cars in the Memphis parking lot, uh, or let people know, hey, uh, you know, need a way to do that until some more families go through. Or if you want to decorate your shop and interact with families uh, and talk to them. Or if you can't get there in person and you don't feel safe doing that, we 100% understand. You can still help out by donating candy. So there is a donation bin in the fellowship hall. When you go shopping, just come buy a couple bags of candy and place that downstairs. But if you have any extra questions or um, I haven't got a flyer for the event yet or anything, uh, we're not going to post it all over Asheville or the Facebook or all that like we've done in the past. We kind of want it to be around this local community. We still want it to kind of be smaller in number. Unfortunately, we can't have the big, huge crowd that we've had for Fall Festival in the past. But we still want to have a fun community event for our families and the families nearby. Um, but let me know if you have any questions. We're very glad about that. Thank you. Thank you, Regina. Thank you. And it's time for good uh, volunteers who will be helping make that uh, fun event happen as we put our creative minds to use to figure out how to translate the good things that uh, we do and we have done here into ways that are definitely safe but still fun during this pandemic time. That's all of the news announcements for the day, but the most important announcement is that you are worshiping together with each other and the Holy Spirit is with us. If you are worshiping from home, then you will find all the information that you need under the video in the description below. The order of worship is there. And there's a way for you to say hello. If you are new to the community or new to the church, we would love to get to know you better. There are links below and there is a uh, guest form link below so you can say hi to us. We are so glad that you are worshiping together with us on whatever day you are watching, the Holy Spirit binds us together and transcends time and space. So as the prelude music plays, I encourage you to settle yourself, let the stresses of the week and of the world melt away. Take some time to share some peace of Christ around. If you are at home, make plans to share some cards or notes or phone calls or letters. If you are here, look around and acknowledge the good people who you are worshiping with today, and then prepare your soul for the worship of God. So come, let us worship the Lord today.
hearts together in our hymn of praise, Holy, Holy, Holy. They sing. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, today's scripture is Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 8. Trust the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will make straight your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord, and turn away from evil. It will be a healing for your flesh and a refreshment for your body. But this is the word of the Lord. Thank Thanks be to God. God. As we prepare our hearts to pray today, if there is a concern or a worry as we weigh on your heart this week, then we would welcome the honor of praying about that with you and for you. If you are here in person, then there are prayer cards in the pew racks that you can write down celebrations or concerns, and you can even mark those to be kept anonymous if you'd like, and know that those concerns will be prayed for this week. If you're here in person, you can put those cards in the drop boxes that are at that exit and at that exit of the sanctuary. If you are watching from home, then we would absolutely love the honor of praying with you and for you this week. 
below the video, there is a link to an online prayer form that you can uh, type in whatever information, whatever is on your heart, that we can be going to the Lord on your behalf for this week. Let us pray. Oh God, we make it a point to give you thanks today. We make it a point to be intentionally thankful today. Even when life throws us challenges that we did not expect, even when it is hard and stressful and we are at the end of our rope and we don't think we can go another day, and we felt that way for many, many days, we make it a point this day to stop and say thank you for life, for your blessings, for your overwhelming, inexplicable love for us. Thank you for your grace and your forgiveness over us no matter what. Thank you for always holding us in your hands, especially on days where it feels like we are falling apart. We know that you are always at work in your world, always watching over your children. We know that you already know the concerns that worry us this week, that it is right and good for us to open our hearts and express them to you, and we are hearts open so that we are ready to receive the guidance and the comfort that you give in return. So we open our hearts today and pray for just a few of the many good folk that we have been thinking about and praying for this week. We continue to pray for Fletcher and Joan, for Howell and Jeanette, for Tammy and for Jess, for Randy, for Patsy, we pray for Anne and the loss of her father. We pray for the family of Lucille as they grieve her loss as well. There is a lot to be said about. May we not deny the sadness that is real and out there in the world and in our lives. May we not deny it, but instead to name it and to recognize it. And to recognize that where there is deep sadness, there was deep love. So we give thanks for that deep love that comes from you and that we try to share and spread to the world. May we be ready to hear the mission and the comfort that you offer us today so that we can be your love bringers when we leave this place. Amen.
New Testament reading for today comes from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 11 through 16. Hear now the word of the Lord. The gifts that he, Christ, gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the full measure, to the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. May God bless the reading of his holy words today. So today and next week, we are continuing to think about how we can conduct ourselves in a way that is helpful when there is so much destructive political divisiveness that is going on around us. Maybe you've heard an old saying, something along the lines of, you should never discuss politics in polite conversation. But, if you never discuss it in polite conversation, then the only way it ever gets discussed is impolitely. And that is 100% what you can see is going on in our country now. There are so many people shouting things that do not help our situation and definitely don't help us to work together. I had hoped that more people would learn the lesson that the pandemic has so harshly taught us, that we are all in this together. We really are. But alas, there is still shouting and name calling. It's almost like instead of a country, we are caught in between opposing sports teams that hate each other and are clashing on the field. And that might make for a really exciting game day, but not a helpful, productive society. So let's think about sports teams for a minute. When you've got a team you love, you cheer for them no matter what. You love your team. You want your team to win, and you want anybody who's playing against you to lose and to go down. That's how it works. Fortunately for you, your team is the best team, right? It's just good on the inside, your team. So, whether it's basketball, football, soccer, baseball, I want you to think about your team, the team you cheer for, the one you believe in. Maybe it's your alma mater, maybe you see them play, maybe it's uh, New Orleans Saints, maybe it's Clemson, maybe it's NC State, maybe it's UNC National, Western, App State, whatever it is, Mars Hill. What you think about your team right now? When they take the field, how proud you are of them. Think about how good they are. They just got so much heart, your team does. They're always classy, right? They've got a lot of class, your team. You're always proud of them and how they play. Not like the other teams. So now I want you to think about a rival team. One you don't like. You don't like playing them because they play dirty. If they win, they're always arrogant. Maybe they cheat. They're just no class. But like your team, even if your team, they might not win all the time, they always put in 100%. Unlike the other team. You know the one I'm talking about. Right. So, here's what's funny. People who love 
that other team you're thinking about think that yours is the one that's down and dirty. There are people who think the same thing about the other team that you think about yours, and vice versa. They think yours is the bad one in their rival, and that theirs is the one with true heart and class. It's just so funny how it can be so polar opposite depending on where you are and who you support. We always think that our team is just good down to the score, good team, and the other team is the bad one. That's the case on the playing field, it's the case in politics. Whether you're cheering for your favorite sports team, or a candidate, or a political party, it's hard not to let yourself be swayed by that support. So that even your judgment of right and wrong can start to get a little fuzzy based on who you're cheering for and who you're cheering against. Like, let's say your team, your good, good team, is playing a tense, high stakes match one day, and the ref calls a foul. The foul on the field. And our clicker does not work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we ran out of batteries right now. Let's see. I think it did. All right, Regina. <laughs> I think it did. We ran out of batteries. Okay. Can you man the laptop? Well, man the laptop. You can one. That'd be even better. You can one in the laptop. Right. All right. I'm going to point to you whenever it's time to play the ball. Okay. Yep. Right. So, your team's on the field. The rep calls a foul. What happens then? Half of the people who are watching, they say, yeah, that's right. It was a dirty foul. We saw that they crashed together. How the other player tripped. Our player? Exactly. What a terrible foul. That's what half the spectators say. What do the other half the spectators say? They say, are you kidding me, ref? What are you blind? Do you need glasses? You didn't see what just happened. That wasn't a foul. They barely even touched each other. Come on, give me a break. So, was the ref right or wrong? Was it a foul or was it not? It depends on who you're cheering for. If the foul is against your team, then what do you say? No, no, that wasn't. Come on, don't be ridiculous. That wasn't foul. The sport that I watch a lot, I watch a lot of soccer from around the world, and it happens almost every time the ref blows a whistle or shows a penalty card. One team and one coach goes, yeah, that's right, exactly. That low down dirty play, you know, we got to we We can serve that foul. It's a good call, ref, good call. The other team and the other coach, they lose their mind. They go bananas. They are shouting. Saying words that you can't repeat, they want well, you gotta be kidding me, no way, absolutely not. The refs in this league are just so unprofessional, they need to get their eyes checked, blah, 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 all the time. Same thing, everybody, both teams are watching the same event, they're at the same place, and yet, two polar opposite different reactions. Almost like there's a division that sways people's opinions of what's going on. Hmm. That's what happens when two teams are fighting each other. Everything is us versus them. Either they lose or we lose. So, do whatever it takes to win. And unfortunately, that's what our country has now been reduced to. Now, maybe if if our political system had more than just two main political parties, it wouldn't be so bad. But when there's just two main options, it automatically becomes us versus them. We need to make sure that they don't win because we want to win, because there can be only one winner, us versus them. This or that, either or. Now that's called binary thinking, when there's only this or that. But the world isn't divided into just this or just that. A 
sports game is, this game versus that game, and that's what you want to watch for a good game. But the real world is not so binary. It's not like half the world is all this and the other half is all that. In fact, in the real world, there is a spectrum. And people can fall at different points on it. The world or the country's population doesn't consist only of people who are this party and only of people who are that party. It would be silly to think that way. There's a spectrum of ideas and priorities, and people might fall on different places on that spectrum, and they might fall on one place about one issue and on another place about other issues, and that's okay. People are deeper and more complicated than political parties want us to be, because political parties thrive when they can build up their base, energize their base, enrage their base. And they have succeeded in doing that and dividing us. Just last week, the Pew Research Center reported that deep disagreements over politics has led significant numbers of adults to flat out avoid people who support other candidates. About 40% Registered voters on both political sides said that they do not even have one close friend who supports the opposing candidate. That is sad. Instead, most voters reporting reported having lots of friends who share their exact political preferences. And that has gotten more and more severe over the years. Things like social media and Facebook have a lot to do with it. They push people into being extreme, so it can get even hard just to get along with folks who are maybe a tiny little bit seeing things different than you. We end up getting so separated that we live in social bubbles and echo chambers, which makes it harder and harder for good, widespread conversation to happen with different kinds of people out there. But those conversations do happen these days, it's more of a boom, um, clash. There's not much kindness or understanding or listening to be had. So notice, that is the opposite of what our Bible verses today say to do. They say that God made folks with different gifts and skills, and by working together, we can build up the body of Christ as we come together in the unity of the faith, growing in our knowledge of and witness to God in Christ. That sounds pretty good, right? Those are good Bible verses. It sounds so good, especially compared to what we are living amongst now. So, how can we get there? First, be aware of yourself and what you're thinking, and what you're saying. Here's what needs to raise a red flag for you, if you notice it. If you reach a point where your team, or group, or party, or candidate, or whatever, is all the way good and always right, no matter what, while the other team, or party, or candidate, or whatever, is always wrong. That should raise a big red flag. We talked about that last week. If you get to that point, that means you belong to yourself and you're not seeing things clearly. Just like on the sports field when the ref calls a penalty, one team says it's all the way good, the other says it's all the way bad. That means they've been blinded. Our scripture text today said that is how children act. Because they are tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine and by people's trickery. So don't let that happen to you. When a group says, whatever they do, we're going to oppose it. And the only thing that accomplishes is that everybody loses. It is awful and unproductive for political parties to say something like that. We'll do whatever we have to to stop them from doing anything. something good. It can happen, you know, that people 
people you disagree with do good things sometimes. But if you have set your agenda as being opposed to them no matter what, then you will find yourself in a really awkward position of arguing against something good that will help you. And that's when it will start to become obvious to everyone watching that you're not really interested if good things happen. You just want your team to win and the other team to lose. And you have politicians defining themselves only by who they are against and refusing to cooperate, then everybody loses. So what else can you do? Thank you for yourself with the Holy Spirit's guidance. Don't base all your standards of goodness on just one team or party or person. Because then, if you do that, it means they will be dictating what is good and bad for you. Even though, like we said, they might be more interested in their team winning than actually helping people. Sometimes, maybe. So instead of doing that, you have to do the hard work of thinking on your own and determining with the Holy Spirit as your guide what the standards should be, what is good and helpful, and then judge policies that you hear by that. What will happen is that sometimes a party or team or candidate you support will do something that you don't really agree with, but that's okay. People aren't perfect and everyone's different. It will also mean that, brace yourself, sometimes you might hear of a politician who's supposedly from the bad party do or say something that you think, oh, that's, that's a good thing to do. I'm glad they're doing that. One of the stories that I love to hear are when politicians from one party say how much they respect a person from another political party. That is such a good sign. They might say, you know, we don't always see eye to eye on every issue, but I know they're a good person, and I respect them. When I hear that, oh, that is awesome to hear. That's what we need more of in our government. I love it when politicians from all different parties work together to find a good compromise that can help the most people. That's what our Bible verses talk about. How God made all of us different. So we do our best work. We accomplish the best things when we are working together. Because we become greater than just the sum of our parts. When we let our differences complement each other instead of divide us. When we can say, I might not see the issue that way, but I respect you, so I'll listen to your feelings about it. Our verses said, that is what maturity is. When we're all working together, letting our differences bless us, so that we can build ourselves up in love, it said. Did it say, build us, build ourselves up in shouting and name calling? It said, build ourselves up in love. One former president said that when he was in office, he continually reminded himself that every representative in Congress was trying to do what they thought was best for their people. They might have disagreed about what that should be, but he tried to remember that everyone was trying to do what they thought would be best for their people. I'm not sure there's always going to be some exceptions. Some politicians are just in it for attention and power, unfortunately. But most people in public service are in it to try and do their best to help their community, help their people. Okay, finally, we must listen to those who see things differently. Maybe they have suffered some things that you have not endured, some things that you don't even have a clue what it's like to 
to endure. So you should listen. Try to understand their perspective, even if you don't share it. And say, I value you enough to hear your feelings about me. I respect you enough to listen. That means not being judgmental, not jumping to conclusions, not assuming that you already know everything. That is arrogant and worldly behavior. You've already decided. You're barely even listening to them when someone speaks, just waiting for a chance to jump in with your opinion. That's worldly behavior. So instead, Romans 12, 2 says, Don't conform to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind to discern God's will. The world's pattern is selfishness and division. Win, lose, us versus it. But God's will means working together. Let us pray. Oh God, we confess that we can get blinded by our own preferences, tendencies, and selfishness, and opinions, and too often we have only wanted our group or our team to win, and we don't care about anyone else. So help to break us of that habit, oh God. We need you to remind us that there is not one person we will ever see whom you do not love unconditionally. So remind us that it is your dream for us. It is your will for our lives as individuals and together, that we work together, that we use the gifts you have given us and the different perspectives that we each have to fit together like pieces in a beautiful, infinite puzzle that you have created. So we give you thanks for the gifts that we have and the wisdom that we have. And we give you thanks for the gifts that others have and the wisdom that they have too. May we use all of those gifts and perspectives to build us up in love for you and for each other. Amen. Now is the time that we respond to the message that God has spoken to us today throughout our worship service. One way that we respond is in song. We'll be joining together with the hymn, We Are Called to Be God's People. And if there is another response or commitment or decision that you feel led to make in your life this week, we would love to hear about it and celebrate it this week. So be thinking about how God is encouraging you to respond or change or make a decision. And we would love to be blessed them with a call or a message. And we would celebrate that commitment and decision with you this week. But right now we will sing and join our hearts together in the hymn We Are Called to Be God's People. Please sing.
gathered in this space are worshiping from home. Thank you so much for our patience as we try to overcome some technical obstacles that delayed our beginning of the minutes and uh, made it uh, impossible to do the live stream uh, in this moment. But the worship video will be posted later, so thank you for those at home for your patience and for waiting until after the service. Uh, as you leave, if you have any offerings or donations, you can place them in the boxes at this exit and that exit of the sanctuary. And if you're watching from home, or if you are here in person, then there are links in the video description below or in the email newsletter for you to give securely online with the card. We truly do appreciate your gifts and your contributions. They help us to survive, and not even that, but to thrive during this hardest of times. And it helps us get things that we didn't know we might need, like a new laptop, so that we can live stream our worship videos and help everyone uh, to stay connected. So thank you all for your participation and your support in worship and in ministry today and this week. As we leave today, remember that wherever you are watching this, in this moment, you are not alone. And as you go through your week this week, you will not be alone because you are loved by God and by us. We pray that you will stay healthy this week in body and in spirit. As we leave, let us join our hearts together with our benediction.